this is Hook by Happenstance. I'm Kendra and it is time for chapter 29 of Yarn Tales. Today is an exciting day as far as Yarn Tales is concerned because chapter 29 is the final chapter of shawl number two for the year. It is going to be the end of the blue shawl. And it's also the last book in Buzzwordathon. If you are new around here, Yarn Tales is an ongoing series I have where I read books, I tell you a bit about them, and then I apply Silly Kendra rules to my rating for the book, and I add a segment to my reading shawl. Now, my reading shawl is an ongoing project, which started as one shawl, because I thought I was going to read 12 to 15 books this year. Obviously, I have exceeded that, so it has become multiple shawls. We're going on to number three after this one. So what I am doing is making a tangible reading log of the reading that I am doing. And I'm trying to do this in part because I want to become a better, more active, more diverse reader. Instead of just reading books to my kids, I wanted to be reading and listening to books for myself. And I have definitely like crushed that goal and I am totally enjoying it. And it is definitely my happy place right now. So Today's book that we're going to talk about is The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. I enjoyed this book with my children via audiobook. We listened to it on our TV through the RB Digital app, which is the audiobook app um, which I get through my State of Kansas library service. So we have multiple library services that we use, so we have access to audio and ebooks for free. I never pay for those things because they are just a luxury that that I cannot, I cannot afford. So instead, we just use all the great resources the library has. So we took on this book as the book we were kind of going to do together during Buzzwordathon. So the words in question were who, what, when, where, why, and how. And throughout the course of the uh, readathon, which lasted for a week, I personally read all but one word. I did not read a book for wear. And technically, we finished this book after the readathon for multiple reasons. Um, we had some technical difficulties a few nights, which made it difficult for us to read the books. And frankly, we just only have so many hours to listen to audiobooks with the kids and I together. The some of things take a little longer than the reading. Uh, like a readathon span if we're doing multiple books and we did some that I read aloud also so I really can only in a week's time for sure commit to one book that I will finish with the kids I can get through more personally um but yeah it was just a little bit of a stretch but I'm still counting it as part of that because that was our intent and we got through the bulk of this book in that time so the girl who drank the moon is a fantastical story about a witch who lives in a forest next to a city a walled city actually she's between two walled cities and one of them has this weird sacrifice day practice where they take the youngest baby on sacrifice day and leave them in the woods to appease the witch or so the elders of the town tell all the people what is actually happening is they take the baby out to the woods they leave it there and zan who is the main character witch finds these babies who keep getting abandoned and she doesn't understand it and she doesn't understand why these awful people are doing this to babies so she takes the babies to the next town who doesn't have enough babies and she gives them the baby and then she knows they will go to loving homes like she goes out of her way to find nice places for these babies to live so she is not the evil witch in fact she is doing everything she can to stop the evil acts of the first town now she gets one of the babies and she always brings milk with her on the way goat's milk for the baby to drink but she can't carry i mean goat's milk is heavy she can't carry enough so after the sun goes down she lets the baby drink some starlight well this particular baby drinks some moonlight as well and thus becomes magically enchanted and so things happen um, for a number of years, you hear about the growing up of this child and her interactions with Zan and the other characters that live in the bog where they live. And it's interesting and fun and they're a nice little family group. There is also some weird, more fantastical, more suspense, thriller, kind of scary stuff that happens in the bad town. And there's some slight interactions with the good town, but not a huge amount. 
You also follow the story of a young boy who is there the night that this baby is taken into the forest. He is, you know, coming up in the ranks of the people in the bad town and he witnesses the baby being left and he thinks it's terrible and so it's just like his growing up dealing with that as well as him dealing with the mother of the baby. So it was a weird story. Parts of it I really, really liked. I really enjoyed the parts about this found family of people in the woods and their interactions and their dealings with magic and how they used it. And there was also an interesting story surrounding a tiny dragon who was under the illusion that he is huge. And that's really funny. He adds a lot of comic relief to the story. But then the stuff in the weird evil town was just weird and evil. So originally, as soon as I finished this book, I gave it a rating of four stars. But then I thought about it, and in part I gave it four stars because I enjoyed the experience of listening to the book with my kids. Like our experience of the book was a four star experience. The book itself, though, as like I kind of chewed on it over time because it's been a while since I finished this book, it just, mm, it wasn't that great. So I decided to bring my rating down to three stars. Now here's the funny thing. I was still chewing over whether I was going to go three stars or four stars, but I was on the final row of my shawl, which we'll get to in just a minute. And I was running out of yarn. Like I just didn't have that much left. I had actually read a decent number of books with my kids. They had been good books. And so we had used up a lot of the single skein I had of the Lady Celine, which I had bought from Cat at Cattails. And I decided that the yarn would make my determination on how many stars I gave this book. If I got to the end of my third row and had plenty of yarn to keep going, well then clearly it was a four star book and I was just trying to, you know, put too much on it. I mean, it already it's like a middle grade, maybe, yeah, probably a middle grade book. Um, maybe I'm just not the right audience, right? But, then I decided if I ran out after my third row, then it really was a three star and the yarn was going to speak to me. And the yarn spoke, and the yarn agreed with me, three stars. So since this book was for a readathon, I did go ahead and add a little bit of beading, which was exciting, especially toward the end of the shawl. I'm using four yarns for my reading shawl, a yarn for books that I consume with my kids, a yarn for books for my life's library service where I get a new book every six weeks, books that are physical that I consume on my own, as well as audiobooks that I consume on my own. Each yarn also has a patterning row that I do for it. I do that. If it is for a readathon, I include beads in that row, and then I add a row of textured single crochet for each star that I give the book. I'll move along from there. So this is the final row of my shawl. And here it is. I went ahead and I added um, the little like blue, I don't know, like diamondy beads. I added those and I went ahead and added them to each of the little V stitches since this was the final row. I thought it would be a nice little, little touch of bling along the edge. And then there's like this kind of medium sized striping as you can see. Like I said, the yarn that I used for this is the yarn for books with my kids, which was in this case, Lady Celine, which is from the Wheel of Time collection at Cattails Yarn. I purchased all the yarns in this shawl specifically to make this shawl. I wanted to make a blue shawl or an overarchingly blue shawl, but one that I would actually wear. So I did a lot of colors that had purples and kind of a grayish wash to everything because when I was looking online for yarn, those were the things that spoke to me were things with kind of that color tone and I worked them all together. So that is the final row. There will be another video coming out here very shortly. I'm going to weave in these ends. I'm gonna block this baby and it's gonna be so big, I think, with the, uh, this is fingering weight and with the number of lace sections in the middle, I think it's gonna spread out and be amazing. So 
Keep your eye here on the channel for that video where I recap everything that I read in March. I know I'm a little behind, but I actually have just done so much reading and I can only throw so much of it at you at a time that it takes me a little while to catch up to real time. So I'm gonna get going on finishing this shawl completely, completely and getting it blocked for you. And there'll be a recap video and a reveal video coming up. If you wanna make sure you don't miss that, subscribe down below because since I do not post on a regulated schedule, that is the best way to make sure you don't miss out on anything here at Took My Happenstance. And also if you wanna catch up on any of the chapters, there is a playlist here on the channel that shows all the things that I've read this year. And I will see you all next time. Bye!